Hard to believe it's already been 10 years. I mean, seriously, where has the time gone? I'm John Rectum with the Retro Review of WWE Raw from June 27, 2011. Yes, it's the episode where CM Punk's infamous pipe bomb promo closed the show. And I know, I know, this has been covered to death by various wrestling fans to the point that wrestling fans are split in almost three camps. Some feel it's one of the best promos of all time, that CM Punk is a god to pro wrestling, that they hang on every single one of his words, they read too much into his tweets, like, oh, he's going to come back at some point, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. There are some people there in the second camp where they really feel that Punk made a lot of excellent points, that he spoke from the heart, even though it was a work shoot, it was a work shoot. He was definitely allowed to go out and, you know, vent and, you know, wear his heart on his sleeve and tell the fans how he felt and tell, you know, the company how he felt. But it was a work shoot. And that obviously it wasn't really going to bring about a lot of change, but it did get a lot of interest because CM Punk is definitely a great fucking promo. And then there are people in the third camp that feel it's one of the most overrated things of all time because it created a subculture of wrestling fans that you know, whine about not getting what they want, then they whine when they get what they want because they wanted something else because they've already moved on to that because they can't focus on one goddamn thing or they just can't ever be happy. And admittedly, I've been guilty of being part of the third camp because sometimes, you know, we're wrestling fans. We just want things to be good and sometimes we just can't be happy with certain things. So really, it's a melting pot, this goddamn promo. I am kind of between camp one and two. I really do miss CM Punk on, you know, any wrestling program. I feel he would be a great boost to any wrestling program if he wanted to be there. He didn't want to be there. I saw him at the Slammy Awards, the 2013 Slammy Awards, and that was like about six weeks before he left, six, seven weeks before he left. He looked done. He looked beat up. He was sick. He was not doing well. It was a good thing that he left. This promo still does hold up. There's a lot of really good shit, and I do tend to quote quite a bit of it. But obviously, yes, there are some people that are just going to overhype stuff. That being said, this promo does rank high on some of the all-time best promos, at least in the modern era. There are ones that are obviously older from Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, and various others that still hold up. Hell, some of the Brian Pillman promos hold up better than this. But there were elements of truth in this. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. So I did like when they had the intro where they would, if they were mad at a certain wrestler, they would cut out their audio. I remember when Hogan signed with TNA and they cut out his audio and a clip of him and they put a clip of the warrior in there even though they were at odds with the warrior in 2011 that was hilarious nickelbacks burn it to the ground plays us you know you know into into all the pyro and everything and that was kind of cool um that's a good nickelback song which is a weird thing to say i actually don't mind this i actually think nickelback has a couple decent songs this is how you remind me of why i fold my pants actually i don't fold my pants i just throw them in the drawer enough about laundry let's get to the show raw roulette that's not pat sajak it's booker t thanks lawler you goddamn old bastard i wouldn't have been able to recognize the difference if you hadn't told me by the way, Booker T, I guess, was the Raw GM at this point, or the GM or so. Actually, they were just making it the Raw SmackDown Super Show because they realized the brand split wasn't working and they wanted to focus on Raw. And I have a feeling that the brand split could end pretty soon, even though both companies have, you know, are on separate uh, networks. It's Shawn Michaels keeping one eye on the camera and the other eye on the fans. He had appeared on WWE programming for a bit. He appeared a little bit before Mania 27 to say Triple H. Before he faced The Undertaker, what makes you think that you can do what I can't? And he, um, you know, he gets a pop from the fans, because of course he does. He says, I tried to stay away, but I couldn't. Sean plugs his outdoor show in the outdoor network. <clears throat> um, and then the, remain, the remains of Nexus, I mean, the husk of Nexus was there. Uh, CM Punk, David Otunga, and Michael McGill McGillicuddy, rather, you know, Joe Henning, a.k.a. Uh, Curtis Axel. Well, I really should have said Curtis Axel, a.k.a. Joe Henning, Kurt Henning's son. Husky Harris was not there. I think he was taken out just before Mania 27 when Punk had that feud with Orton. And Mason Ryan had an injury. Welsh Batista is down. That guy was doomed. I mean, he wasn't bad, but he was doomed. Anyway, um, they talk a bit, and uh, Punk has already made it clear that he's the number one contender, and he's, he is going to leave um, Money in the Bank in, in Chicago with the WWE Championship. He's leaving in a few weeks. And he says, um, when is what you didn't do when you left the company? And, oh, no, we're getting all this. We're straight shooting. And he says, I'm I'm leaving because of all of you people. God damn it, Hogan invaded the show, and he wasn't even part of the company. So if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, you people wouldn't be here. He was telling us years ago, and we didn't want to listen. <clears throat> so who was better? Was it Sean? Was it Punk? Eh. Sound off. Sound off. Who was better, Sean or Punk? 
I mean, promos, Punk was better. I will say Sean had the... It's tough. Punk had some really exciting matches, but I will say a lot of Sean's WWE stuff holds up. Anyway, um, but Brett was always better than Sean. So anyway, he says, uh, we, you know, we're nothing alike. I mean, sure, we have some similarities, Sean says. We don't drink or smoke or do drugs. And Punk says, anymore. Ooh, that was actually pretty funny. It, it, it was. That was admittedly funny. Sean has come clean, literally and figuratively, about all the stuff that he's gone through. And credit to him. I did see his a &E biography. And it was nice to see him contrite and actually admitting, finally, that he was... A, I mean, he's admitted for years and years, but it was nice to hear it he, there. So anyway, um, and, you know, Sean, they go back and forth a little bit. Then Sean super kicks Otunga, which sadly was one of the most, you know, memorable things David Otunga was involved with in his WWE career. Because, by the way, when they had the shiny penny, uh, you know, shiny penny tag team championships, remember those? Remember those damn things? It looked fucking ridiculous. So anyway, remember how heel Michael Cole was around at this time? And the whole Raw GM and all that bullshit, and we had to have Michael Cole on our screens. And thank God we don't, oh, we have to have Michael Cole on our screens now. Even though Michael Cole was bad then, and he's still so bad at his job now. Seriously, the guy's fucking rotten. And I was at Over the Limit 2011 when he had that Kiss My Foot match against Jerry Lawler. The only thing that made that worth it was getting to see Bret Hart come out and put Michael Cole in the sharpshooter. That was cool. But seriously, having to endure Michael Cole cutting a promo live scarred me for life. The guy's a goddamn useless tool. He's a, he's a, he's a good tool for McMahon because he's basically, you know, McMahon's polished tool. Have fun on seeing that. So anyway, um, spin the wheel, make the deal. Oh no. What's going to happen? CM Punk's going to face Kane. And then we get sweet chin music to Michael McGillicuddy. And then Sean would never come back to the ring. Oh, he would come back for the Saudi blood money. Bone saw is ready. Anyway, we get Kane versus CM Punk. CM Punk chance. Good thing those don't, you know, aren't going to stick around once they come back, you know, once crowds come back. They're totally going to happen at Money in the Bank, aren't they? I mean, I know that's in Fort Worth, Texas, but I bet you they're going to happen. So anyway, <clears throat> um, the match is typical. The announcer plug that Punk will be leaving, and that Punk says, hey, I'm just going to leave, and leaves after a couple minutes. Says, I'm going to walk out, and he got counted out. WWE Poker, remember that? Poker, I, don't, I barely know her, and I, barely, and I don't even know her anymore, but you know what? It's a royal flush, just like Princess Diana in those French tunnels. God damn, I am brutal. Anyway, so Sin Cara versus Evan Bourne. One guy is all elite, and one guy... Wasn't very good. I got to see Sin Cara, uh, Mystico, or Mystico, whatever the hell they call him, Caristico. Is that what they call him? In, uh, called him in New Japan. I got to see him as part of the uh, Super J Cup in 2019. Yeah, you could definitely tell it was Sin Cara because he was botching a lot. So anyway, spin the wheel. It's a no count out match. And remember that horrible lighting they had for Sin Cara. Yeah, it was here and it was shit. I saw it over the limit. It was absolute shit. I mean, granted, it covered the fact that I didn't, you know, that I was having to watch him versus Chavo Guerrero in 2011, but it was not very good. So anyway, Power Ranger chance and the, uh, do you think Sin Cara uh, has a game plan going into a match or does he just make it up as he goes along? Michael Cole asking an important question because you could tell that he was just calling a lot of this and he wasn't very good. He gets weird head scissors into a you know, face bus for one, two, three. Okay. The match was fine. It's hard to believe Evan Bourne's still going, but he's, he's, um, slowed down and, add, and you know, he still does aerial ship. He's add some good moves to his arsenal. Submission stuff. Kofi with Booker. And Vicky spins the wheel and, man, it's player's choice. And Kofi says, I'm going to face Dolph and Vicky's going to be banned from ringside. You know, Vicky doesn't look any different, uh, 10 years later, except she looks more like a, you know, an actual cougar Mulder goddamn face. I would not feel bad, or I would feel bad rather about saying that, except Vicky Guerrero's kind of a goddamn bitch, so I don't really care. Can we bring Eddie back? Can we please bring Eddie back? Why couldn't Vicky? Never mind. Anyway, um, they plug the, uh, they plug the Raw side of the Money in the Bank ladder match, you know, because they were going to have Raw and SmackDown. This is before they had the women in the Money in the Bank ladder match. To be fair, given some of the women, they could have only really had four because some of them shouldn't have been even on the first rung of the ladder. In line for WWE Championship opportunity. Just say title shot. Title match. Whatever. God damn. Dolph versus Kofi. Dolph rest hold Ziggler and trouble in paradise in a few minutes. That's it.
There's your match, because it went to commercial. Booker um, recounts everything we just saw. Maurice is there, capital punishment. To be fair, English is her second language. It was just funny. Um, Del Rio keeps bumping into Maurice. It's not the only time that Del Rio would, you know, get close to a woman and assault a woman, allegedly. Jeez. God, Del Rio, remember when he was going to be something and then he kept torpedoing his own goddamn career because he was a piece of shit and thought that he was, oh, you know, worth something, worth more than he was because the law of diminishing returns, nobody really wanted to see him anymore. So, it's a steel cage match. Tell me she didn't just spin that. Miz knows how Maurice spins. So, um, <clears throat> so we had the slam of the week. Remember Randy Johnson? Baseball fans, remember Randy Johnson? The big unit. Ha <laughs> ha. So, Big Show fists Mark Henry on SmackDown. And a capital punishment, um, Henry slams show and beats him up. So, you know what's coming. Obviously, Mark Henry is going to be barred from ringside. Oh, no, it's a big show versus Del Rio in a steel cage match. And, geez, Del Rio behind bars. If only that would actually happen. If you get it, you get it. So, anyway, it's the big show. It's the usual fair. Uh, Del Rio focuses on the knee. These guys have been feuding for a bit. The, they certainly had matches that happened. Their 2012-2013 feud was weird. Um, here's Mark Henry. He says he does what he wants. Whatever. I do what I want. He just ripped the door off its hinges. That's gotta be Mark Henry, the steel driving man. And he hits, uh, he tears the door off its hinges and then hits Big Show with it into the wall. That's adorable. And the collapsible wall says, oh, oh shit, I, I missed my cue. And then falls. And the crowd chants, holy shit. And there you go. So we get recaps of Kelly Kelly winning the Divas title the previous week. Yeah, they really didn't care about the women at this point, did they? They had Kelly Kelly versus Nikki Bella with Brie Bella, and it was a submission match. It went 70 seconds, and that was 71 seconds too long. Let me make it clear, by the way. Kelly Kelly got dealt a bad hand. She was never meant to be a technician in the ring. She was also one of those, they had they had her run the ropes for a little bit and says, yeah, go out and wrestle. Seriously, go back and watch what she did at uh, December to Dismember uh, 2006. I mean, if you can endure any of that. She was lost, and it wasn't even her fault. I'm not a big fan of Kelly Kelly in the ring. Apparently, she's super nice. But a submission match. You would have thought the crowd was given a sleeping pill. Seriously, they, they said they, they went to sleep. It was amazing. To be fair, they weren't really given a reason to care about the women. And Kelly Kelly won with the Boston Crab. And this, again, a 70-second match was 71 seconds too long. And then Eve makes a save in her Daisy Duke shorts. So at least there was something. Um, tough enough recast with uh, Andy Levine. What happened to him? Jen, I know he didn't last long in the company. What happened to him? What is he doing now? So anyway, uh, Booker talks to DDP about the very best of Nitro. Three discs set. Drew interrupts. Man, what a difference 10 years makes. DDB's guys, Yoga Empire, Booker is insulting everybody because he has no idea what the hell he's doing and saying besides shucky ducky quack quack. And Drew is a freaking, you know, it's like a Greek god the way he's car you know carved out of stone. It's amazing. Sean super kicks Drew. And Sean's like, I didn't see any of that because I was on the other side. Yeah, Sean, we get it. We we fucking get it. So anyway, be a star. Don't be is like nobody likes a bully. And then the Bellows are featured saying that. Oh, that's that's timely. Granted, there's bullying and wrestling anyway, but seriously. Show tolerance and understanding. WWE always shows tolerance and understanding. I mean, hell, they pushed Darren Young, the former Darren Young, now Fred Roster, didn't they, when he came out? No, they didn't. Anyway, so we get Swagger and Miz versus Mysterio and Alex Riley. Tornado tag. Remember Alex Riley? What, what happened to him after he left NXT? Has he done anything in wrestling? I'm genuinely asking. I'm not even knocking Alex Riley. He's never one of my favorites, but it was cool when he turned on Miz. Miz is still wrestling, though he is currently injured, and Swagger is now Pride Boy Hager trying to attempt insurrections backstage. And Mysterio is carrying, you know, his son to moderate success. So anyway, uh, this match, it was actually fine. There was some good pacing, since so was a tornado attack. Everybody in the ring! And Alex uh, <clears throat> went for, you know, took forever to hit a hip toss off the ropes. It's like, Mysterio does about eight spots, and then Riley's like, shit, live TV, Miz, whoop, that's it. So, uh, splash on Swagger, one, two, three, match is exciting enough. Ray may have hurt his knee, pretends to be shocked. And then we get Shawn with his show plug. Here's my question, how did Shawn Michaels hunt? Which eye did he use to target the animal? I'll stop saying that, by the way, when, no, I won't. 
So anyway, uh, Truth spins the wheel. It's a tables match, and he, he doesn't want to be okie doke by Lil' Jimmy or by the Cena fan. So this match barely gets going. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks, champs. After a few minutes, Punk runs in. He moves the table, and then Truth spears Cena through the table. And then we get to the infamous pipe bomb. I'm not going to quote a chapter and verse and everything, <clears throat> but I do like how he starts out, John Cena, while you li uh, lay there, hopefully in, as uncomfortable as you possibly can be, I want you to listen to me. Um, I want you to digest this, because... When I leave, because before I leave in three weeks uh, with the WWE Championship, I have a lot of things to get off my chest. I don't like, I, I don't hate you, John. I don't even dislike you. I like you, uh, I do like you. I like you a hell of a lot more than a lot of people in the back. I do hate this idea that you're the best in the world because you're not. I'm the best. I'm the best in the world, you know, and that's fine. Punk always, to me, his matches were better. That being said, to dis and, and I know Punk wasn't doing this, but... With the body of work, Cena did put in the work. And his U.S. championship run and some of his stuff at Mania was pretty damn good. I will say they should have turned him heel. I kind of get why they didn't, but it was a missed opportunity. <clears throat> but, oh, the one thing you're good at is kissing Vince McMahon's ass. You're uh, as good at kissing Vince's ass as Hulk Hogan was. Maybe not as good as Dwayne, because Dwayne, you know, kissed some pretty good ass. Uh, oops, I'm breaking the fourth wall, and he's doing all this. This is a great promo. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Um... You know, he's been the best since day one, and that uh, he, you know, he's been vilified, and he talks about, you know, how Paul Heyman saw something in him. Yeah, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. You know who else was a Paul Heyman guy? Brock Lesnar. And he split just like I'm going to be splitting, but the difference between me and Brock is I'm going to be leaving with the WWE Championship. Um, and he, you know, he's grabbed so many events in Candy McMahon's brass rings, imaginary brass rings, and he realizes they're just that, they're imaginary. Um, and for the last almost six years, he's proven he's the best, you know, on the microphone, in that ring, on commentary. Nobody can touch him. And yet, no matter how many times I prove myself, I, you know, won't be on the Collector's Cup. I'm not on the program. I'm barely promoted. I'm not allowed to be in bad, you know, I'm not in movies or on bad shows on the USA Network. Um, I'm not on the poster for WrestleMania. Um... And I'm not on Conan O'Brien or Jimmy Fallon. The fact is, I should be. And trust me, this isn't sour grapes. This is where I was like, it kind of is. And Punk made some good points about this. But the fact that Dwayne is on, you know, is in the main event of WrestleMania and I'm not, um, makes me sick. To be fair, Punk had a point. Him and Jericho could have been a main event, except they were hyping up Cena and Rock. Punk and Jericho had the better match, but the bigger spectacle was Cena and Rock. And I will say, and shout out to Keir Johnson for this, um, that he feels that Punk's promo to The Rock, you know, right, you know, like your arms are too short to box with God, that kind of promo, that measures up to this. Now, he, however he feels, I'm not, I'm not going to say here, Keir, you, I, you can sound off in the comments if you want, but him and I were going back and forth about this, and I will agree, that is a pretty damn good promo. Has this been overhyped? Maybe but it still does hold up because a lot of this, you know, relying on part-timers, all that stuff and everything, there's a lot to, you know, digest. And he talks about, you know, the fans being the reason that he leaves. Uh, you're sipping out of the collector's cup, you, you know, or the program that my face isn't on. You try to get me to sign it at the airport and sell it on eBay because you're too lazy to get a real job. <clears throat> um, leaving with the WWE Championship and maybe I'll go to fan in New Japan Pro Wrestling or Ring of Honor. Hey, Cole Cabana, how you doing? Um, I'm rushing through this damn thing because the promo is like five and a half minutes. And he says, um, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a, you know, spoke in the wheel. And I understand that you're going to keep pouring money into this company. And Vince McMahon is going to make money despite himself. He's a millionaire. He should be a billionaire. And you know why he's not a billionaire because he uh, surrounds himself with glad handed, nonsensical douchebag. Yes, men who are going to tell him what he uh, wants to hear. And I'd like to think that maybe this company will be better off when Vince McMahon is dead, but it's just going to get taken over by his idiotic daughter and his doofus son-in-law and the rest of his stupid family. And then he gets all fired up. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You know this anti-bullying thing? Well, Vince McMahon, and then it cuts off and all that. And it's great shit. You know why it's great shit? Because a lot of that is coming true about Punk, or about, about Triple H and Stephanie. And... Yes, it's work shoot. Yes, it's this. Yes, it's that. I'm not I'm not taking it as gospel. But there are elements that I can take as gospel because 10 years after the fact, you know, Vince, yes, the company's making a shit ton of money and the product has dropped. Look at what the ratings were for this 
and the Summer of Punk and stuff like that. Look what the ratings were before. Like, before that, you know, <clears throat> heading out of Mania 27, even though Mania 27 was shit, they would kill to have those ratings now. And they don't. And it's sad. So anyway, yeah, the pipe bomb to me still holds up, though I recognize it as a work shoot. And that some people have gotten to the point where they hang on every single word. It is a promo at the end of the day. If it means something to you and it got you back in the wrestling, tremendous. If you feel it's overrated, okay. I don't agree, but that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.